stretching. This conference will now be recorded. Stretching from this, this world. Uh, saints, there was, there were some questions that I asked myself and pondered on at, at one time. That I wonder if it ever crossed your mind as, as well. And before I even ask or tell you the questions I ask myself, uh, this is going to be a crowded bus, so just don't complain. I, I wonder if it crossed your mind as well. One was, does, does God take us away from our earthly relations? Or does he take them away from us? Does he take us away or does he take the earthly relations away from us? Another question that I started to ponder on was, should we investigate or research what this strategy does and accomplish for us? Does he take us away from our earthly relations? Or does he take them away from us? And should we start investigating what this strategy does in our lives? My response was, is it to stifle us to worldly relations and quicken us to heavenly relations? What is God's strategy? And should we just investigate what is going on? Is he trying to make what the world offers stagnant in our lives? Is he taking us away or is he taking it away? For being in the world also meant we can enjoy the things of the world. The beautiful creation the Lord has given us. But we are not to engross or captivate ourselves in what the world values. Nor are we to chase after the pleasures of the world because we are still in the world. Keep in mind, saints, that God did not, of course, create the world to be this anti-God system. We know that. But he created the heavens and the earth and all the things on the earth so that you and I could live to fulfill his purpose. And Satan began to organize after sin was escorted by the rebellion of Adam, the very things created by God for mankind's existence into his system. You remember this Bible study scholars, that after the fall, sin escorted, was escorted by the rebellion of Adam. And now the things that were created by God for mankind's existence, he pulled it into his system. So he, Satan systemized things because sin was escorted by the rebellion. He needed a door to open so that he can bring in his world, the world he wants to, to live in. Ah, just stay with me. Uh, so he systemized things. Example. Uh, man needed food, so Satan systemized it to where eating the proper things for physical health and strength, now unhealthy things that can destroy from the inside out are options. And now man is fighting gluttonous because an issue, because all things that were created for man's existence to glorify God Satan systemized those things for his world. 
man needed delight and enjoyment balancing out the whole condition in which we were created. So the enemy systemized entertainment and cravings for physical pleasures. I, I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm coming straight out the word. He created false religions and, and confused cultures and tainted educations and tainted businesses, the love of money. And it is in this way he formed the world. <laughs> Good God. Uh, he, he formed a world, a system to occupy human beings to take them away from God, from living for his purpose. So in his world, he desensitizing our sensibilities, which was escorted by, by rebelliousness. And so Satan created this, this world systematized everything that God created for you and I to enjoy. And all these things used by the enemy to fill up our time, to take our energy, to occupy our thoughts, so there would be less for, for the Lord. If I can bring you into this world, then it would overwork you, overwhelm you, where you will not be able to do what you were created to do. Paul said in his letter, uh, in chapter four of the same letter, if, if our God gospel is hid, Paul said, it is hid to them that are lost and whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which not believe. He systemized the things of God in his world and man dwelt in a rebellious state. And what the enemy did was, and is doing is trying to get man to occupy themselves, to overwork themselves, to have agenda bigger than serving God, to make them twisted up, confused in education and culture in this world. First John chapter five, verse 19, it says this, John says, we know that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. We are aware of that, that the world that we are dealing with is under the control of the evil one. Verse five of the same chapter of first John, <laughs> said, who is he who overcometh the world? Who can win this battle? The response is, but he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. Wait a minute, there is a world that's being controlled by the evil one. The scheme is to keep human beings under his control by using the world. He uses anything and everything as part of his system to attract and occupy people. Which is why we are called out of this world into another by God's grace. And he constrains us to it. The Lord calls us out of this world into another by God's grace, and then he constrains us to it. This adds to the purpose of our, our stretching. You don't have to say amen. I have said enough last night when I was putting my message together. It's, it's like Abraham and the rest of the patriots, patriarchs are calling them from their adultery, the Lord did from their wicked associations out of their former conditions. He called Abraham and the others out of the course of life they lived in to another, to a better country, to, the, to a better condition 
and a better course. And it was God's good pleasure to appoint this course. Peter said, we are chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him who called us now out of darkness, that world, into another, another world, marvelous light. The reason why we show forth praise is because we no longer live in that world. We've been called out of that world into the marvelous light. We are to be heavenly in both profession and practice according to the state to which we are called. We are called from this world from being worldly to heaven to be heavenly. I'm not trying to sound holy. I'm just trying to sound heavenly because I don't live in that world anymore. Uh, I don't live in that world anymore. And in God's world, he still works on me, but I don't belong to the world. When you meditate on his stretching strategy, you'll begin to identify and see how the Lord has an end in his eye to your beginning. When you start to ponder on the stretching strategy of God, you'll find out that he has an end in his eye to the beginning of your stretching, making us prepared for his favor, for his blessings, for his kingdom and he knows what dispensations will work best to that end you are in a dispensation of a stretching and he knows what's best to get you to the end for his glory uh, so somebody say lord stretch me out of this world uh, that's when you'll see how the condition is a great friend to your spirit how it's serving more to promote grace and duty. When you begin to study the strategy, the stretching strategy of God, when you begin to ponder on his word, you begin to see how the condition is a great friend to your spirit. How it's serving more to promote grace and duty. The means are used for the purpose. Because how many can truly say that in their life, it was the suffering of some things that caused them to gain greater things? Because when you begin to ponder on the strategy and the stretching, you'll see how the condition is a great friend to your spirit. Because the stretching promoted grace and duty on my behalf. And even though I've suffered some things, it caused me to gain greater things. Uh, you got to see the strategy in the stretching, uh, how the condition is a great friend to your spirit. That if he would have never used the last stretching, I would have never seen his power in this way. Uh. Okay, uh, a couple of speed bumps, and then then I think we're going to ride smooth from there. Uh, how many can say, because you have now pondered on the stretching strategy of God, how many can say, if it had not been for the last stretching, I would never have seen his power in this way. If it was not for the last stretch. If it was not from for that last piece of information, that last bit of news, that, that last condition. And a true saint of God can say, the condition is a friend to my spirit. Oh, somehow it promoted, it promoted grace and duty. This, this key to know is because I am not limited to my resources 
because I am not representing myself since I am representing his government, his abilities. I must seek and work his will. Uh, he's stretching me, but I'm not limited to my resources because I can go through, but I still have unlimited resources because I'm not representing myself in this. I'm representing his government. I'm representing his ability and I must seek and work his will. Bring remember, down, saints, remember, saints, uh, our whole mission is to give others a sample of what it is to have a God at work in a person's life. That, that's that, that's my, my whole uh, that my, my whole mission is to give you a little sample of what it looks like to get mud washed off of you. I just want to give you a, a little sample of what it is to be taken and snatched out of darkness into marvelous light. My job is to give you a sample when everything falls down, but you fall down on your knees to give God praise. My job is just to give the world a sample of what it looks like when God has his hand on your life. I just got to give a sample, just give you Hallelujah. a sample. Just a little sample because I'm not representing myself. I'm representing him. Oh, oh, good God Almighty. Somebody shut the door. Shut the door. Everybody's on the bus now. Uh, the, the word Reverend Allen, the word ambassador derives from the Greek word uh, presbuo. Presbuo is the Greek word and we get our word ambassador from, which means to act as a representative or a messenger. Ambassadors are the highest ranking representatives of their government. And their primary responsibility is to represent and work towards the best interests of their government. Uh, that's the role and responsibility of an ambassador. They are not elected, Reverend Greeley. Instead, they are chosen by the government or the head of state. Now, and the ambassador acts as a representative or a messenger. They are not elected, they're chosen uh, to represent. They're chosen and their primary responsibility is to show and work towards the best interest of the government that chose them. Oh, good God Almighty. Uh, saints, when an ambassador is chosen, and sent to live and work in a foreign country, they still remain a citizen of their home country, even though they're sent to another country. Okay, let me just uh, break it down here. Mother Quick, uh, then that explains why I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. Because I am an ambassador, uh, a representative of Christ uh, I'm in the world, but I am not of it. I'm a citizen of another country. <laughs> Break it down, Pastor. The leading purpose of an ambassador is to accurately represent and advocate for their home country's goals <laughs> while being abroad. So while I am abroad, my job is to advocate for my country's goals. <laughs> oh, if, if you ain't getting this, you in the wrong seat. Somebody get to the back of the bus. Uh, he sends me out from another world into this world and tells me to represent him in another world. Huh. And so now I become an ambassador from another world. Even though I'm abroad, I still advocate for my country's goals. Uh, that's why the world don't understand me because I'm not of this world. I'm of another world. Huh. Uh -huh. That's why they don't understand when you bend down and bow your head to pray when they're looking at the TV for their advice. Uh, they never understand it. They don't understand why you got so many sticky notes on your screen because you got to meditate on his word day and night. They don't understand this because you are and I are an ambassador from another country. Uh, and our leading purpose as ambassadors is to actually represent and advocate for our country's goals. Hallelujah. Now, now, in order to do this, 
uh, they have to be thoroughly acquainted with their country's policies. Uh, uh, in order for you to be an ambassador, uh, uh, you have to be uh, familiarized yourself with the country's policies. Uh, uh, in other words, the do's and don'ts when you go into the other world. Uh, uh, you got to familiarize yourself uh, with the policies of the government that you represent. Uh, I'm helping somebody here. Uh, uh, so now you got to thoroughly be acquainted with, with your country's goals, uh, uh, the thoughts and those things that are favorable and unacceptable. Uh, okay, now I'm going to put you in another world for you to represent me. Uh, you are in, but not of. Uh, uh, you go abroad, but you're not part of. Uh, you go to advocate my goals and not its goals. Uh, so don't bring me back what they say and take them what I'm saying. Uh, because you're going for me, you're not going for them. Uh, uh, you are my ambassador. Uh, uh, you was not elected by uh, people. I chose you. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that God chose you. He chose you out of many to represent him. And now go, be in, but not of, is what his command is. It reminds me of John chapter 18, verse 36. I'm getting excited, Brother Chauncey. When Jesus told Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. It confused Pilate. Wait a minute, you're standing here. You look at me straight in my face and you mean to tell me you're not part of this world? No, Jesus says in chapter 18, verse 36 of John, my kingdom is not of this world. Oh, I like this part where Jesus said, if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would be fighting right now to deliver me from the Jews. You better be glad I'm not of this world, because if I was of this world, we'll be fighting right now. You wouldn't be spitting me in my face. You would not be putting a, a, a crown of thorns on my head. You wouldn't be with me the way you would if my kingdom was of this world. Oh, good God almighty. Uh, can anybody remind themselves uh, when they were in their last affliction with someone else and you had to tell them, uh, my kingdom ain't of this world. If it was, uh, we will be putting up the dukes right now. Uh, oh, yeah, I would have been shooting up the place if my kingdom was of this world. Uh, just as you slap me, I will slap you back. If my kingdom was of this world and Jesus had to remind Pilate that my kingdom, I'm not here to be part of your world. I'm bringing my world to this world. I'm in it, but I'm not of it. Because if I was of this world, my servants would be fighting that I might not be delivered to the Jews. And then John chapter 15, it also says this in verse 18. You can write it down. Huh? Jesus said to his disciples, huh, if you are of the world, huh, uh, the world will love his own. Huh? Uh, but because you are not of this world, huh, I have chosen you out of this world. Therefore, the world hates you. Huh? Uh, that's why they hating you. Uh, they hating your morals, your standards. Uh, when you say, well, if, you, if you're quoting the Bible, then live the Bible. Uh, the world hates you. Uh, uh, they hate you because you are not of this world. Uh, and what God is trying to do to you and I is to tell us and do, uh, to stretch us out of this world. Uh, whenever we are part of it, he stretches out of. Uh, be in, but not of. And so Jesus yeah. says they'll hate you because you are not of this world. How many phone calls have you gotten this year on a Sunday morning to go somewhere because people of another world trying to pull you out of your world into their world? How many uh, entertainment, how many picnics, how many cookouts happen around 10 to 12? And how many uh, times have you skipped church to go to a cookout that didn't start to after you would have got out of church? Uh, and you said in your mind, uh, I got caught up in this world again. Uh, that's why he has to stretch us out. Of, I know what I'm talking about. Stretch us out of this world. Uh, and so Paul says, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 3, Reverend Greenlee, uh, that our citizenship is in heaven. 
<laughs> and from it we look from the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm not a citizen of this world. <laughs> uh -huh. The last vote is Jesus. <laughs> the last vote is not man on earth for me. <laughs> the last vote for my life is Jesus <laughs> because I'm not a citizen of this world. Uh, I've been stretched out of this world uh, and now I'm an ambassador to the world uh, but I'm not of the world uh, are we going to get to that letter this week uh, I'm opening it up right now uh, uh, this is what Paul is, was articulating to the church of Corinth uh, how God in Christ reconciled a sinful people to himself uh, and then commissioned us you and I with a message of reconciliation. Uh, he, he, he reconciled us, you, uh, and then he sent you back into the world as an ambassador uh, with the message of reconciliation. Uh, and he tells you, arm yourself uh, because not everybody is going to listen. Not everybody's going to hear you. Uh, uh, and you're going to feel funny because I've stretched you out of this world. Uh, you're going to feel funny. You're going to look strange to some. Uh, how can you pray? If God is God, then why is sickness on the earth? They're going to now a rebuttal. There's going to be rebuttal and affliction, persecution, trials and tribulation. But I pulled and stretched you out of this world so that you can be an ambassador. So that now comes out of your mouth is the message of reconciliation. Uh, we got to talk about the other world uh, and we got to point out this world uh, because people are comfortable being systemized by Satan uh, who now used his world uh, to keep man from giving God the, the glory in his world. And so our job is uh, uh, to give the message of reconciliation. Am I helping anyone right now? Uh, and so keep in mind, he uh, uh, keep in mind, Corinth was a prosperous city, uh, one that was frequently troubled by sin. Uh, it was a major hub, Corinth. Uh, everything was happening in the city of Corinth. Uh, matter of fact, you can hear now, do y'all go to Corinth every now and then? Uh, some people vacate to Corinth uh, because of all the happenings that were going on. Uh, and the city was full of temples and many gods uh, that one could worship whomever. Uh, well, we see that in this world now. Uh, uh, people just coming up with gods. Uh, uh, they just coming up with things to worship. Uh, uh, they worshiping what's around their neck. Uh, they worshiping the music. They worshiping the sun. They worshiping the things Ooh. that God created. Uh, and this Ooh. is why uh, we are feeling troubled uh, because we are abroad. Uh, whenever you have to me ask you this uh, have you ever vacated to another country uh, and felt strange when they were talking a different language uh, and it's a language that you're not used to uh, and you tried well, your best to fit in uh, you tried your best to fit in but you just can't translate what's going on uh, because God, God has now stretched you and I out of this world and sent us back abroad Ooh. We are ambassadors. Let them see his feet and his hands. Let them hear his voice out of your mouth and your soul. And so here, uh, they were full of temples and, and people worship uh, whoever they wanted to worship. Matter of fact, you can find Aphrodite. Aphrodite was the, the fertility, the, the fleshly love goddess. Uh, if you want to then, uh, serve the love God. You can go to Epiditus, the goddess, and you can worship her. It was Asclepius was there also. That was the good health God. Some people are worshiping the good health God even right now. They thinking, here it is, uh, Sister uh, Jessica, that their good eating is what's going to make them live long. And they serve in uh, Asclepius, uh, the God of health. And many of the converts here in Corinth, uh, may have at some point been part of yet still engaging. Uh, okay, now we got to walk through it. Uh, uh, somebody just buckle up because uh, uh, the light is on. Somebody's trying to stand up. Uh, uh, many of the converts in Corinthian uh, uh, was, was part of these worshiping other gods, small g. Uh, now let me put the small g there uh, because when the big g talk, the small g's bow down. Uh, you're going to see it now and you're going to see it at the end uh, that every knee will bow small G's uh, 
God. I mean, the ones on the mantle, the ones on the fireplace, uh, the ones you painted pictures of. Uh, every knee is going to bow. Now, here's the strange thing. The, the small G's can't bow because they're only statues. Uh, but every knee is going to bow. Uh, and every tongue is going to confess. Uh, Pass the preach. Uh, and many other converts now have dabbled in uh, the worshiping of the small G's and now have been converted. Uh, and notice here, uh, some may have been still engaging because in his first letter, uh, he wrestled back and forth with them uh, whether or not they should eat meat that had been offered by idols. Because uh, somebody may have asked that question. Uh, if the food was offered to idols, shall we still eat it? Uh, Paul began to address those uh, those uh, questions and concerns. Uh, uh, he said, well, if you don't know, eat the meats. Uh, but if the meat going to offend your brother, then don't eat the meats. Uh, but don't eat it. They told you I just worship this from uh, to the God. Uh, and now he had to now go further. Uh, and this was complicated for the newly converted people, uh, the newly converted Christians who are now being taught that there is only one God revealed in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, now they are they tiddling, they tattling, uh, they're going back and forth, they're hot scotching, uh, uh, touching God and touching the small G's. Uh, and at this time of his letter, uh, uh, spiritual as well as fleshly immortality within the community was being experienced. Uh, it was a major inflow. Uh, I'm going to preach it. Look at me now. Uh, by the time we get to chapter 6, Mother Harris, uh, Paul has been arguing about the whole sense in which their lives have been changed. Uh, that there is in fact uh, a new life transformation and power of the new covenant ministry in them. He's been arguing all the way up to chapter six, but he says, I need you to understand, Sister Sheila, I need you to understand something. Some of you are walking in a way where it seems like you received the gospel in vain. Some of you are tiptoeing out of church and still going to worship your small G's. It seems to me with the questions that you're asking that some of you are still walking in vain. It looks like you received the gospel but but you have received it in vain. In other words, I want you to be careful in how you act. Uh, which is why in the following verses he speaks uh, in the following verses he asks these rhetorical questions about attitudes about the actions uh, that was presented to them uh, he wasn't commanding Christians to withdraw from the world uh, no that's not what he was saying uh, he wasn't commanding them to go from the world uh, and move to a secluded wilderness or lonely island uh, to lock yourself up in the closet because uh, you can lock yourself up the closet and you're going to still say the blood of Jesus against yourself. Uh, so he was not telling them uh, to find somewhere in the woods and stay there. Uh, no, that's not what he was saying. Uh, he was telling them you have been transformed by the blood of Jesus. Act like it. Uh, uh, act like it. Uh, act like you are an ambassador. Uh, uh, that now here. Uh, uh, but know your calling, he's saying, uh, is to live for Jesus even at the entryways of this fallen world. Uh, uh, am I helping someone so far? Uh, I got a point for you. Hold on. Uh, so Paul begins to ask these questions, rhetorical questions. Uh, to challenge the ears of the believers, huh? to emphasize and highlight the differences and why we are to yield to the stretching out of this world by the Lord. Uh, he began to ask rhetorical questions uh, so that you now can ponder on the strategies uh, of the stretching out of this world by God. Uh, he asked these questions here. Uh, what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Uh, uh, he asked that question. Uh, and then he said, what fellowship has light with darkness? Uh, he asked another question. Uh, what concord uh, has Christ with Belial? Uh, Belial was a word that had its roots in the word worthlessness. Uh, and it can to be used uh, and referred to as Satan. Uh, so what harmony uh, does Christ has with Satan? Do they harmonize together with one voice? Can you sing R. Kelly and a hymn at the same time? Oh, no. Uh, where is that harmony going to come? 
Uh, he asked another question, Mother Quest, Sister Harriet. Uh, uh, what portion or part does a believer share with an unbeliever? Ah, uh, uh, because their conversation and your conversation is going to be totally different. Uh, he asked these rhetorical questions. He already know the answers. Uh, and then he asked his last of the five questions. Uh, what agreement is all in the Bible? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? How are you going to have an ISIS idol around your neck and say you serve the one and true only God? What is it now? Either you are transformed or you're not. Either you're being stretched out of this world or you're fighting the stretching of God. It was like Paul was saying, here is my concern. I am concerned that you start off being transformed and then you got caught up in the mud of this world and started to be like them. And that's not how it's ought to be. I started letting the world describe to you what love and kindness is. I ain't got to look at no rainbow, which is not a rainbow, to tell me what being kind is like. I'm not going to let the world tell me what love is. Love is finding Jesus and being an ambassador for God. Some of them got caught up in the mud of this world and started to be like them. And Paul said, that's not how it's supposed to be. How? Is the world going to tell you how much time you that should be allowed to church? How are you going to tell me the hours of my worship? I worship when I want to worship. I worship on whatever day I worship. How are you going to tell me what's allotted for my time? For my time of worship. And the world. He was telling them many got caught up in the mud of the world. And started to be like them. But the world is starting to tell you how to talk. You need to talk this way. The church needs to talk that way. And maybe you get my attention. I ain't trying to get your attention. If he don't knock on your door, you in trouble, not me. Uh, the world can't tell me how to talk. Uh, Jesus tells me how to talk. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, let the words of my mouth, I think that's what the psalm is saying. Uh, let the words of my mouth uh, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, uh, my Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Uh, the world can't tell me how to talk because uh, I ain't of your world. Uh, I am from another world. Uh, so the world can't tell me how to set up uh, the church so they can feel comfortable. I ain't trying to put light so that you can feel like you just move from the club at night to the club in the morning. You don't dictate to me from your world how this world should be. You forgot I'm abroad. I'm not of this world, but I'm still in it. Somebody said, Lord, stretch me out of this world. And that's what Paul was addressing. He began to give implications of what life change or the new covenant looks like. If my life is being transformed and being stretched to the likeness of Christ, if he is stretching you and I out of this world, if you are accused of being a Christian, is there enough evidence to accuse you? Uh, of being a believer uh, uh, is there enough for you uh, is enough on you to be accused uh, of people to bypass you uh, and saying I didn't know you went to church uh, you don't act like it at work uh, uh, is there enough evidence on your life uh, that man would accuse you of being a child of God uh, I know I'm preaching to somebody uh, thinks there should be some transforming evidence uh, when two parties uh, with different passions and different different purposes uh, try to operate by being yoked together uh, it's a recipe for a disaster uh, it's a recipe for a disaster uh, because you can't act like the world and then act like God uh, uh, it's a recipe for a disaster because uh, somehow you're going to get twisted uh, you will cuss in church and sing in the club uh, good God almighty because you can't yoke yourself. You can't be in this world and then be part of this world. You have to be in this world and not of the world. Somebody said, Lord, stretch me out of this world. Stretch me, Lord, out, of stretch this me world. out of this world. 
uh, stretch me out of this world. Here's branch one. Here's branch one. For those who have to go somewhere, go back to your world. But we are citizens of heaven. Paul says we are ambassadors of Christ. Here's branch one. Paul tells them now. He says, do you know? But here it is. Branch one. Do you know that? Here's branch one. Identity transforms association. Identity transforms association. Verse 14. Uh, verse 14 says, be ye not unequally yoked, uh, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion have light with darkness, uh, identity transforms association, uh, the stretching and separation is demanded uh, because of what we are, uh, he has to stretch you and keep stretching you out of this world. Uh, the stretching and the separation is demanded. Uh, the foundation of what we do is who we are in Christ. Uh, it's not the other way around. We do not become the temple because we live holy lives. No, no, that's not it. We live separate lives because we are the temple. Oh, good God Almighty. And so what we are finding out is what Paul was telling them. Identity transforms association. Uh, let me go a little deeper. Uh, this is why we must choose the narrow path and the right passengers in our life. Uh, you better find the right passengers on your narrow path. Uh, uh, because they're not uh, you're going to find yourself yoked with somebody uh, that's pulling the other way uh, okay here it is uh, uh, choose the narrow path uh, but make sure you have the right passengers in your life uh, because he's going to stretch you out of this world uh, and you got to make sure that everybody's being stretched the same way uh, I'm in the world uh, my job is uh, to bring the message of reconciliation uh, but my not, my job is not uh, to try to be part of your world uh, you only travel with those who's going to a destination uh, that you are not going to regret uh, that's the ones you travel with uh, the ones that's going to a destination you ain't going to regret in the end uh, have you ever traveled with somebody in life uh, and say you know what I should have dropped you off a long Long time ago because I regret where I am right now I'm regretting where I am so only travel with those who are going to a destination that you ain't gonna regret so make sure that they are not just attached but a sign oh I'm getting ready to go somewhere here make sure they are signed but not attached you got to be in it but not of it don't let them hitchhike into your life to pull you in the systematic world that the devil has designed. Uh, in his world, he designed uh, for man to be depressed and oppressed and suppressed uh, in his world. Uh, that man will never see uh, the light of the day in a cloudy world. Uh, uh, he systematically uh, aligned things up uh, and he brought it in by the rebelliousness of man. Uh, so Paul pulls uh, from his knowledge uh, of the Old Testament uh, uh, when the law of God of Moses says uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 10 uh, it says you shall not plow an ox and a donkey together uh, I'm going to work this thing out uh, hold on to your seats uh, uh, what Paul did to the Corinthians uh, because Paul was a student of the law uh, he pulled Deuteronomy chapter 22 and 10 uh, where God told Moses uh, uh, don't don't put an ox and a donkey together uh, if you're going to plow uh, this was part of the commands of mixing things uh, in other words Paul was saying uh, it's a problem when you start to mix things uh, you wouldn't put vinegar in a cake mix uh, there's a problem when you started mixing things huh? and the yoke was a heavy beam huh? that was strapped across the upper shoulders and around the neck of animals huh? to tie them together huh? oh I'm still on verse 14 huh? but I'm going to work this thing out uh, there was a yoke, it was a beam uh, that was strapped across the shoulders uh, on the neck of the animals. Uh, he said, don't put an ox and a donkey together. Uh, the yoke was harnessed uh, across the two animals uh, to plow the wagon or plow. Uh, 
And as the animals walk, the weight of the wagon will be distributed between the two animals. So don't put a donkey and an ox together because somebody ain't going to pull their weight. They want you to come to the club, but they won't come to your church. Can't put an ox and a donkey together. Because they ain't going to pull in the same direction. Oh, good God Almighty. Holy Spirit, have your way. And as the animals walk, with the beam, the yoke on them, the weight of the wagon would be distributed between the two animals. So the selection of the animals was given a great deal. You had to give a great deal of thought before you start yoking to another animal. Why? Paul says, why should we watch what we're being yoked to? Make sure you're not unequally yoked. You're in this world, but don't yoke yourself with the world because the animals needed to have the similar temperament. Oh, y'all ain't getting this. Have you ever come off church service on a high in the glory cloud of God and then one of your unbeliever friends call and they want to talk about something to pull down the joy that you had in the Lord? You can't put unsimilar temperaments and yoke them together. Oh, good God Almighty. Ladies, can I tell you, he's going to meet you, but he's going to have this picnic on Sunday. If he's of the world, he ain't coming to your church. He's going to wine and dine you outside of the church. That's why you can't yoke yourself to one who don't have similar temperaments. If not, they will be mismatched in both strength in their pace and eating habits. I know what I'm talking about because Paul wasn't saying unequally yoke just for marriages. He was saying businesses, interactions, don't be unequally yoked. Because you got to have the same temperament. Good God Almighty. I'm preaching this thing here. And if it is not the same temperament, Sister Harriet, there's going to be a mismatch in the strength. You will call on them and they won't be there because you don't yoke with somebody who don't have the same temperament. You better find yourself a prayer partner who's going to the same destination, who is abroad and not of this world. You and our job is to bring the message of reconciliation, but not to yoke up with this world because it's a mismatch, not only only in strength, not only in the pace, but in the eating habits. They eat the things of this world. And you chewing on the word of God. And you saying, thank you, Jesus. And then saying, all graces to Allah. We ain't part of the same world. And when you're mismatched and yoked, and you're unequally yoked, there's going to be a mismatch in the strength, in the pace, and the eating habits, which will give inconsistent level performance when you're trying to yoke with the world you're going to have inconsistency in your performance one day you're giving God glory the next day you're trying to run away then one day you're there and the other day you're not there one day you chime on the next day you're chiming off one day you're listening to hymns and another day you're listening to something else one day you're cussing and one day you're fussing one day you're giving them praise and one day you're fussing somebody else out. Be in the world and not of the world. And don't put a donkey and an ox together. The ox will be held back by the added weight that the world is putting on. Why are you worrying about what tomorrow brings? You ain't yoked with the world. And don't let the world put that added weight on you. But when you yoke an ox and a donkey together, the ox going to carry the added weight of the donkey who will not pull anywhere near what the ox is able to do. Oh, good God Almighty. 
Don't put our dots in a donkey together. Don't be unequally yoked. Because the ox will be less effective. It is yoked to a donkey. I'm working this thing out. I'm giving you animal theology. You can't put an ox and a donkey together. Because the ox will be less effective. Because of the donkey. Watch who we allow to influence us. Watch who we allow to who's counseling us, whose counsel we attend, and whose counsel we're receiving. You better watch out and not let the world yoke itself up with you. Don't put an ox and a donkey together. And don't be unequally yoked in your business, in your association, in your relationships. Do not be unequally yoked. The donkey is a different species than the ox. And unbelievers and believers are moving in two different worlds. I know love to be abroad. And I know and God loves everybody. But God doesn't yes. love what everybody's doing. So don't try to yoke me with your love. The love of God was demonstrated on the cross that while you were yet sinning, he died for you. But his love won't let you keep going against his will. Don't put an ox and a donkey together. You can't put an unbeliever and a believer together because they're moving in two different worlds. We are empowered by two different powers. We are motivated by two different passions. So to partner yourself together and expect them to plow in the same direction is foolish. That's why you don't be unequally yoked. You can't touch the gods, the small jeeps, and ask them for a favor. And then ask God for a favor. You can't rub the rabbit's foot and then bow to God. You can't have luck in numbers and then trust God. You can't put the yoke on an ox and the yoke on a donkey and think they're going to pull the same way. A lot of Christians are confused today because they yoking themselves with a donkey and an ox will never go the right way because it's going to pull the weight of the donkey and itself. We are called to love. We are called to serve. We are called to work with those who are non-believers. Then don't get it wrong. Then pastor, what about my job? You better go to work. What about going to Macy's? You better stay in line. What about getting my groceries? You better get your groceries. We are called to love. We are called to serve. We are called to work with those who are non-believers. But Paul says not to be unequally yoked because we are, according to Matthew 11, 22, I haven't even given you a branch too yet. According to Matthew 11, 22, uh, Matthew 11, 29, to be, be, be correct, Paul says uh, that we should not be unequally yoked. But Matthew 11, 29 says, Take the yoke of Christ. One part of the yoke is around us, and the other yoke is around Jesus, and he determines my pace. He determines my path, and we submit to his leadership, and through his yoke, we can feel the pulling. When I'm trying to go the other way, I can feel him pulling me forward. When I wanted to give up, the yoke won't let me go. He won't let me go to the world when it's trying to get my direction to go another way. I'm yoked with Christ and he's pulling me. The stretching, his guidance, his direction, it synthesizes and it binds me to him. His yoke trains us to work for the kingdom. If you ever seen two ox work together, one ox is being trained by the other one. And when I'm yoked to Christ, he's showing me how to be in this world. 
world and not of this world. And when the world start to persecute you, notice when you're yoked with Christ, he say, don't worry about it. You better keep walking with me. No weapon formed against you. Shelby, when you're yoked with Christ, you can hear him. He'll pull you. He'll stretch you when there's other distractions around you trying to pull you away. When you're yoked with Christ, he'll stretch you out of this world. Look at somebody say, Lord, stretch me. Stretch me. Here it is. Branch two. Branch two. I, I, I figured this is the last Lord, part. Stretch. This is the last part of this series. I might as well give it, Brother Chauncey, all I got. Uh, branch two, write this down. Ne never, never let the discomfort of his stretch, never let the discomfort of his stretch cause you to forget the high privileges. Never let the discomfort of his stretch cause you to forget the high privileges. Okay, here it is. 14, he said, don't be unequally yoked. Uh, don't put an ox and a donkey together. But then he tells us, never let the discomfort of his stretch cause you to forget his high privileges. Okay, pastor, where did you get that from? Well, let's look at the strategy. A strategy of God. Uh, verse 16 says this. What agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Okay, let me say this. Never let the discomfort of this stretch cause you to forget your high privileges. What Paul is showing you and I and what he showed the Corinthian church is how extremely one-sided this is for you and I. Because of Jesus, God dwells in us. Read it. Because of Jesus, God dwells in us. God walks among us. God is our God and take us as his people. So don't let the stretch cause you to forget your high privileges. Because I am yoked with Christ, God dwells in us. He walks among us. He is our God and we are his people. He then connects this to an exhortation for us. Because this is true. Here it is. He says, because this is true. Because you and I are yoked with Christ Jesus. He connects this to an exhortation. Because this is true. Because you already, you are already the temple of the living God. Uh, because the Lord made us uh, his dwelling place uh, because he walks among us uh, because he is our God uh, and since this is true look at verse 16 uh, the appropriate response uh, on our side uh, is to not try and reconnect uh, what he is stretching us from uh, uh, y'all ain't get this because uh, somebody ain't waved their hand uh, because you forgot your high privileges uh, because of your stretching but don't let the discomfort of the stretch make you forget the high privileges he said because he's already walking with us because he's already dwelling with us because he's our God and because we are his people then don't respond wrong we need to respond in the appropriate way it needs to be a response on our side and what he's saying is if you know all this then don't try to reconnect to what he's trying to stretch you from if you know all this if you know you've been transformed if you know you've been yoked with Christ can I tell you something the only way you can get out of his hands you got to literally take the yoke off yourself because the Lord ain't gonna take it off he's just gonna keep walking because he know if you get away from him you're going backwards uh, the only way uh, that we can reconnect with the world uh, is we got the desire uh, and desire and fall under uh, the systematic ways of this world. Uh, uh, Satan, the God of this world, uh, has blinded the minds uh, of them who don't believe. Am I preaching to anybody? Uh, uh, we are always uh, on the responder's side. 
Uh, when you're yoked with Christ, uh, you're always on the responder's side. Uh, because of what the Lord has done, uh, we reciprocate, reciprocate uh, what he has done. Uh, somebody's still not getting it. Uh, uh, Reverend Allen, set me up a tent in Walmart parking lot. I'll preach there. Uh, because here the word Bible church ain't getting this. Uh, uh, we are uh, always the responders. Uh, somebody ain't responding right now. Uh, we so supposed, supposed to reciprocate. Uh, what he has done for us. Okay, let me put it out here. If he is dwelling in you, because you say you're the temple of God, if he's dwelling in you, if he's walking among you, if he's your God, and you are part of his people, I don't hear no noise coming from the church, then you must not be the church, because we are responders. Because of what the Lord we supposed to respond and not be unequally yoked. Oh, I'm going to preach it. I'm going to give it to you. We ain't supposed to be part of this world. What, pastor? Then what I'm going to do? Live for Christ. Let him work it out in your life and walk the path of righteousness and trust in the Lord with all your heart. And yes, your fleshly understanding. Because in all thy ways, he'll direct you. But you got to yoke yourself with him and not yoke with right. a donkey. Look at somebody say, don't yoke with a donkey. I tell him, don't, don't yoke with a donkey. I don't know how many donkeys in your life, but you better not yoke with a donkey because you're going to pull weight, more weight than you're supposed to. You're going to carry more of the burden. How many of the unbelievers, they don't want you to pray, but they want you to hear their problems. I can't be yoked with that. Let's pray first and take your problems to the Lord. How many unbelievers will spend four hours gossiping to you, but don't want to spend two hours in church? I can't yoke with that. I ain't got time to waste. I ain't got time to stay here. I got to give God all the glory and all the praise. How many of us uh, have yoked with the world uh, and used uh, our computer uh, to watch movies, uh, but can't watch a saint uh, in fellowship? Uh, you better not yoke with a donkey. Uh, somebody said, don't yoke with a donkey. Uh, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, branch three, branch three, uh, uh, branch three. And then I'm going to let you go. Uh, 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 branch three, write this branch down. Uh, uh, we submit to his stretch. Uh, oh, this is powerful. Uh, this is powerful, Deacon Thomas. Uh, uh, we submit to his stretch uh, uh, to regain our distinction. Uh, there it is, Sister Pippi. Uh, we submit to his stretch to regain our distinction. Uh, okay, I, I got to work it out. Verse 17. Uh, he says, we're for, Paul says, uh, after he talked about the unequally yoke, uh, after he talked about what happens to the transformed life, God dwells in you. Uh, he walks with you. Uh, he talks with you and he tells you, you are his own. Uh, after all that, uh, uh, then point three says this, uh, we submit to his stretch uh, to regain our distinction. Uh, verse 17 says, we're for them. Uh, then come out from among them uh, and be ye separate, said the Lord, uh, and touch not uh, the unclean thing uh, and I will receive you uh, uh, to myself. Uh, we submit to his stretch uh, to regain our distinction. Uh, uh, there is a lot of what is to come, uh, and we are not aware uh, of how to face it. Uh, but one thing we can know, uh, and one thing we can do, uh, is take the assessment uh, of where our loyalties are. Uh, uh, come out from among them, uh, and be ye separate, says the Lord. Uh, I, I, I've had this one time. Uh, Reverend Allen, I had this uh, uh, in my life, and I don't know if anybody else had it, Sister so Brina. Uh, I said, Lord, I got better friends in the world uh, than friends in the church, uh, and that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I got better people treat me in the world uh, than preach, te teaching me uh, and preaching and help me in the church. Uh, and then I realized uh, I can't look for someone who is linked up with a donkey. Uh, I got to look for ox that's linked up with ox that's linked up with Jesus. Uh, and any time someone unequally yoked, uh, you can't expect uh, ox results from a donkey. Good God Almighty.
Uh, there's a lot that's coming our way. A lot that we're going to have to face. So we got to take assessments of where our loyalties are. We need to look over our shoulders and ask, who am I yoking? And who am I bearing? I'm bearing a yoke of who? We got to start taking assessments of our lives and stop trying to travel with wide friends on a narrow road. Oh, my God. I'm helping somebody, but I'm going to walk this thing out myself. Let me get off the bus. I'm going to shout right on the highway. I'm not trying to travel with wide friends on your narrow road. They got wide, broad thoughts and minds of this world, and you trying to travel on a narrow road. Good God Almighty, you got to take assessment to make sure I'm giving them the message of reconciliation and they are not giving me the message from their world. I am an ambassador for Christ and I'm giving you he lives, he died, he rose again so that we can have access to the tree of life and no man knows the day or the hour that the son of God shall appear but when he comes I'm so glad I'm yoked with Jesus and he stretched me out of this world. Stop trying to travel with wide friends on a narrow road. It's not until you are willing to risk being different that you'll finally see God's stretching will make a difference. But you got to be willing to be different. But if you're trying to be like the world, if you're trying to act like the world, can I tell you something? If you're looking for a pastor with a muscle shirt and walking around like he just came out the gym. The devil is a lie. The focus is not on me. The focus is on the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're looking for broad lights and big city, get you a ticket to New York City. But at here the word Bible church, the lights go on because in him there is no darkness. The devil is a lie. If you want popcorn, go to the movies. If you're looking for coffee, go to Starbucks. But in the house of God. As for me in the house, we will serve the Lord. Saints, what could be? What could the world threaten you and take from you that would cause you to hesitate your confession and God stretch it? What is the world threatening you with that will cause you to not confess the gospel of Jesus Christ? What is your job threatening you with? What is your friends threatening you with? That you are hesitant in your confession. Do they have to point you out like they pointed Peter out? He sound like a disciple. He look like a disciple. He must be a disciple. And Peter said, I don't know the man. What is the world threatening you with that will cause you to be hesitant in your confession and cause you not to submit to God's stretching? The problem is we allowed ourselves to be around and become pulled by the wrong pleasures. It doesn't break our hearts anymore, but it's breaking the heart of God all the time. The Lord is looking for those whose hearts can still break when they are doing those things that are not pleasing to God. If you are not doing God's will and your heart is not breaking, you better ask God to break your heart. Let me be broke the way you broke and not get caught up in the pleasures of this world. He's still looking, Reverend Allen, for those who don't have a hard heart towards the stretching out of this world. You got to have a heart for Jesus so he can stretch you out of this world. Somebody say, Lord, stretch me out. Stretch me out. Stretch me out of this world. Give me five more minutes. We're going to get to our destination. 
the wide gate. The wide gate. Jesus talked about the wide gate, Reverend Greenlee. The wide gate is easy because it doesn't matter who you are and who you are yoked with. You can go on the wide gate and that gate doesn't impose the same restrictions of the narrow. That's why everybody taking the high road and not the narrow road. The wide gate is easy to go through, which is why many choose it, he said. The word brawl in the Greek, it means having ample room and spaces. It means rooming. The reason why people like that, because they want to wake up and serve them, and sometimes they don't. That's the broad road, and they don't have any restrictions on a broad road. You can serve what you want. You can do what you want. You can yoke up what you want. You can yoke up with a pimp if you want on the broad road. You can yoke up with seven people at one time if you want on the broad road. Because there is no restriction. The Lord is stretching. He's stretching you and I. Yes. Of the line of the crowd, he's stretching you out of the crowd's line, the wrong line. And just because there's a lot of people in their line, it doesn't mean it's the right line for you. And stop looking at somebody else, he's stretching you out of the line. What they may be going through, he's got to stretch you out of it so that you don't fall the crowd of this world and get back up and yoke with the world. You are I. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are yes. yoked with Christ Jesus. We've been sent abroad with the yes. message of reconciliation. The Lord is making a promise to those who are willing to separate themselves and throw off the yoke of the world. Go out of the midst of and be separate in their lives. Verse 17, the Lord is doing, he's given us a promise. If you can separate yourself, I like this, here it is. Oh, here it is, Doc, because I like researching. The Greek word for uh, uh, separate, apalazizo, apalazizo, is the Greek word, which means to mark off from the others. It means boundaries, it means to limit, in a bad sense, it means to exclude. Uh, if you can just uh, set some boundaries uh, uh, for the world, uh, if you can limit them uh, for not getting caught up in you, uh, if you can uh, exclude yourself uh, from the bad jokes uh, so it don't break your spirit, uh, if you can separate yourself, verse 17, uh, then the Lord gave a promise. Uh, if you can do that, Sister Sabrina, uh, and those who are willing uh, to be stretched out of this world uh, and ready to walk in his freedom, uh, then 17b and 18 uh, is a promise to you. Uh, I will receive you and I will be your father and you will be my sons and my daughters, said the Lord Almighty. If you can just separate yourself, give me some time for worship. Give me some time for devotion. If you can just separate yourself and cut the TV off, cut the radio off, cut the texting off, cut the iPad off, cut the computer off, cut the people off. If you can just steal away and do do my will. I will be your father and I will receive you. I wish I was in the parking lot right now. Lord, stretch me out of this world. Stretch me from the problems. Stretch me from the issues of this world. Stretch me from the drama of this world. Stretch me from the pain of this world. Stretch me from the pressure of this world. Stretch me from the materialistic things. The things that won't affect me. Let it does not be part of my life. Stretch me. Somebody else stretch me. Lord, stretch me out of this world. Stretch me out of this world. So I don't get caught up in the world's drama. So I don't get caught up in the world's pain. So I don't get caught up in the world's sickness. So I don't get caught up in the world's oppression. Stretch me. Let me educate myself according to your word. Stretch me out of this world. Oh, that I'm yoked with you. Send me back. 
so I can be a sample of what stretching looks like. Now send me back so I can show my job what it looks like, how you can still survive when you lost your last job and got a better job. Send me back so I can show them what stretching looked like. It looked like I was going to break. It looked like I was going to fall apart. And I bend a little, but I didn't break up. Send me back to the world so I can show the world what the cross means. I can show the world how fellowship with his suffering. I'm also going to work with the power of his resurrection. You may try to harm me, but I'm not of this world. I am an ambassador for Christ. Somebody say, Lord, stretch me out of this world. Lord, stretch me out of this world. Come on. Come on and yell it. I'll mute yourself. Stress me out of this world. Stress, Stress me, me out of this world. Stress 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 me out of this world. In the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He stretches us out of the world. Then he sends us back now as ambassadors so that we can be samples of what the hand of God looks like and here you are and I are being ashamed of what we've gone through and what we may have to endure and not even realizing we are samples of stretching we are the examples of what it looks like to be under the stretching hands he stretched us out of the world Paul said he told them, don't be unequally yoked. Stop yoking with a donkey. Yoke with Christ. Because he's going to always pull you in the right direction. He's always going to guide you. And the stretching comes from us wanting to look the other way or going the other way. So he stretches us out of the distractions, the systematic ways that the devil has created for the blinded minds. Hmm. And many don't even realize the high privileges of being stretched by the Lord. He says, if you are stretched, if you are transformed, then God dwells in you he walks with you. He is your God. And you are part of his people. Good God Almighty. And if that's so, then come out from among them. Be ye separate, said the Lord. And if you can do that, if you can keep the heavenly mindset, then you will know that I am your father. You are my daughter and my sons. If you could just separate yourself. Some things that happen, I say, you know what? I can't think like that. Because if I think like that, I'm going to start yoking with a donkey. And I can't yoke when I'm already yoked. So keep this in mind. Paul was writing this letter, but he was telling the Corinthian church it was not just for Marriages. People always say this. Bible said, "Don't be unequally yoked." Watch out for those who know how to quote but don't know how to live and know how to interpret. That's why the church is called here the Word Bible Church. Paul was talking about in businesses, associations, relationships. Don't be unequally yoked because you'll find out one is pulling more weight than the other. Come on, Pastor. Being yoked with an unbeliever. When you're a believer, you'll find yourself praying in a situation or about a business and the other one is doing something else. Don't be unequally yoked. You'll find yourself saying, you know what? I'm going to fast about it. And someone else saying, why are you fasting? We just need to do this. See, that's unequally yoked. You want to make sure you're yoked with those going to the destination that you won't regret. That you won't, you will not regret. So the Lord, what he has to do is stretch us out of this world. 
there's the stretching. Then he sends us back. It's ambassadors. So you should feel strange. You should feel strange. Have you ever heard things going on and you say, is it me? Is it me because I'm not worrying about it? Is there something wrong with me because I'm not getting twisted up? Is there something wrong with me? Well, it is something wrong with you. You're not of this world. And I like what Jesus said. I may have to start using Sister Jasmine, Sister Mimi sometimes. I may have to use it when I'm approached with somebody and say, if I was of this world, there will be some fighting going on. But because I'm of another world, I practice self-control. But let me tell you, if I was of this world, you would not have finished that sentence. But because I'm of another world, God's going to get the glory. Can, can I get somebody just to say amen with that? Uh, I mean, if it's just me or anybody else, going to be. Amen. 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 I read I wonder, Jesus has some self-control, but he worded it right. If I was of this world, my servants will be start, will start a war up in here. Pilate did not understand being in the world, but not of, of the world. Being in the world and not of the world. So the Lord stretch us out of this world. And then he'll send us back as messengers of reconciliation. You might learn something this morning. The five parts of the series, can you see, say at least one part? The Lord bless me of all five parts of the series. The, the timing is right. The timing is right. Stretch marks. Stretch marks in, in my life. At this time, I want to ask Reverend Greenlee if he would call those who were in need of a savior to the altar at this time. Amen, amen, amen. We bless the Lord for his rich, rich word. Hallelujah. The ultimate, the ultimate manifestation of being stretched out of this world is to give your life to Christ. That translates you from this world that you get up in every day, that you go to work in every day, the trials, the struggles. And once you give your hand to his hand, then you are stretched literally to a whole different dimension. But until you give your life to Christ, you can talk about stretching, but there will be no stretching. So I invite someone on today to just for a moment to just in your own soul, just cry out, say, Lord, help me. I need a savior. Everyone needs a savior. I spoke to a good, good friend yesterday whose older brother passed away and he doesn't know if he was saved or not. And he has to preach his brother's eulogy in about a week. I don't want to be at anyone's graveside wondering if they were saved. So on today, during these perilous times, during these times filled with trials and tribulations, with homes being filled with bereavement, with sickness and all kinds of things going on. Lord, stretch me out of this world. If there is one on today who does not know Christ Jesus, I implore you to give your hand to him. You don't have to wait. Hallelujah. You can do it today. Lord, stretch me. If you don't know God, Jesus Christ, his son, and the pardon of your sins. Do it today. Tomorrow is not promised. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord, saints. 
Someone's going to give their life to Christ today. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. If there's a man, if there's a woman, if there's a boy or a girl who knows that you need to stop playing, I invite you to stay online after this call today. Just stay online. One of us will pray with you. Or you can send an email to htwbcpa, P is in Paul, A is in Apple, at gmail.com, and a minister will contact you today. It's time to stop playing. If there's one who wants to come back home, you've tasted the goodness of the Lord. You've seen how sweet he is, but you slip back into a yoke with a, a donkey, with a lot of donkeys, and you feel yourself running wild. Come back home. He's married to the backslider. And if there's one who needs a church home, we invite you on today. God is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. So Lord, stretch me out of this world. Hallelujah. Pass it back to you. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. We he offer Christ to you, oh my sister. He will give you brand new life, new life abundantly. Oh, come, come on to Christ. One more time. We he offer Christ to you, oh my brother. We he offer Christ to you, oh my sister. He will give you brand new life, new life abundantly. Oh, come. Come on to Christ. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for the decisions that are being made all over. Amen. We thank God for this series. How many were blessed by this series? Amen. This series. Hallelujah. Stretch. Hallelujah. Marks. Awesome. Awesome. Marks. Yes, powerful. Yes, thank you. We thank God for what He is doing in our lives, and we'll see what He has prepared for us um, in the Sundays to come. Um, a couple of things, or well, a few announcements, quick announcements. One is uh, I'm just putting out there, Sister Sabrina, if you can give me some singing lessons, some private singing lessons, I would appreciate that. Um, and we'll talk about the cost later, but. Uh, I'm going to sing a solo one of these days and be on key. Okay. All right. Uh, the second announcement. The second announcement is I'll be doing a video announcement on uh, just uh, talking about the up and coming events as, as well as um, the church, uh, bringing the church up to date, uh, just holding up on going into the building until we have things uh, together. So I'm working with, we have a, a team, um, uh, at the church that's putting things together for us right now uh, so that we'll be ready to go back into the building. Uh, the next time, if we see one another, we'll either try to do a the anniversary service on the, in the parking lot. Um, if it's too hot, then we'll do it virtual. Uh, but right now, it's not until maybe the end of August or the first Sunday in September that we'll go into the building because we're going to make sure everything is is where it's supposed to be. Amen. Amen. So we just we're just going to trust the Lord. All right. But I'm not going to move until uh, he lays it on my heart for us to be safe in in the building. All right. But it does not say you cannot come to the parking lot service if we have the next parking lot service. Also, too, Sister Charlene has uh, pictures now of all the supplies. My goodness, all the supplies for our uh, missions project. Amen. As well as some videos on the website now. So you can go on the church website 
uh, AB Ministry and Trustee Spears get everything together so you can click on it and you can see some of the pictures of all the things that was collected as well as the video of the pastor, uh, Pastor Edwards and the school. And so I, I say and take a moment um, sometime this week and just click on and look at all the contributions. And we so we thank everyone who uh, who was giving and still giving uh, to this project so that we can be a blessing uh, to those in Dominican Republic. So I thank God for for your service in that. And those who are still sowing seed, tithing, and offering, we ask that you continue to do that. Amen, amen. Uh, the p pandemic is not an excuse in the eyes of the Lord. Amen, amen. It's not an excuse. Amen. So we thank God for those who are still tithing and giving an offering so that we can continue to do the work of the Lord at Hear the Word Bible, Bible Church. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, but I'll be giving a, a video announcement um, so that I can discuss all this that's coming up uh, for, for Hear the Word Bible Church. If there's no other announcement, if it is, somebody just raise a hand. I think I covered everything. Don't forget the anniversary picnic and seven, 17 years Hear the Word Bible Church. 17 years. You've been looking at this old face for 17 years. 17 years. I never divorced you. I never separated myself from you. 17 years. Amen. I thank God for the strength. Amen. And for the encouragement uh, for being shepherded here to where Bible Church. Amen. And you as sheep. So listen, give yourself a hand raise. I don't care if you were here 17 days. You still part of here the word Bible Church. Amen. We got some OGs, but we got some new Gs as well. Amen. At the church. Okay. Um, let's let's end with this. <clears throat> Sister Mimi, I see you smiling. I know this is your favorite request. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and sing it uh just because you're smiling. Uh let's sing smile a while before we close out. Smile a while and give your face a rest. Lift your hands to the one you love the best. You could turn around or wave your hand and smile, smile, smile. One more time. Smile a while and give your face a rest. Lift your hands to the one you love the best. You could turn around or wave your hand but smile 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 i see a few people smile i'm gonna sing one more time smile oh wow i see sister Ron. and give your face a rest lift your hands to the one you love the best you can turn around or wave your hand but smile 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 father we thank you for all the transpired today we thank you for your word we thank you for allowing us to worship and glorify your name. You are a great God. Thank you for stretching us. And Lord, we close by saying, stretch us out of this world so that we can be ambassadors for Christ. We ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say, amen.